This is a Rubik's Cube. You probably might have seen this cube multiple times, whether it's in a classroom watching classmates trying to solve it during their pastimes, or in the internet watching this Rubik's Cube competitions, wherein you get mesmerized by how quick they are trying to solve this simple looking toy that becomes a shuffled complex puzzle. Today, the Rubik's Cube is revered as one of the most beloved toys of all time. But however complex you think this cube is, there is actually a trick to solve this cube. And that is through group theory. My name is Marcos Ecortes from Section EK, and I am going to show you the Rubik's Cube and group theory. So, what is a Rubik's Cube? A Rubik's Cube is a 3D combination puzzle made up of 26 cubes combined on a rotated axis, forming a 3x3 cube consisting of 6 unique sides, wherein each side contains 9 cube elements having the same color. The way the Rubik's Cube mechanism works is that an internal pivot mechanism enables each face or side to turn independently, thus mixing up the co colors and then shuffling the entire cube. The aim of the Rubik's Cube is to come up with move sequences in shuffling back to its solved state, wherein the solved state is each side contains the nine cube elements back to having the same color. This is Erno Rubik, a professor of architecture from Budapest and the inventor of the Rubik's Cube. With his educational background, he studied sculpture at the Academy of Applied Arts and Design and architecture at the Technical University of both in Budapest. The origins of the cube dates back to 1974 wherein the prototype of the cube was made up of wood held together by elastic bonds and a paper clip. It took him several months to create the design for the cube and once he was able to create the design, he added colors to each side and began turning it. With how simple the cube looked, he realized that he forgot how to put it back to its original state. It took him a whole month to solve the cube. A year later, he patented the cube, and in 1977, the cube was sold throughout Hungary with the name Buvoc Kaka, or the Magic Cube. Then in 1980, Rubik partnered with Ideal Toy Company to create an international market for the cube, which was named as the Rubik's Cube. That is how the Rubik's Cube came to be. So we are going to talk about some mathematical terms you can find within the cube that could help with the group theory. First, we have the subgroup. The term subgroup would refer to the piece types of the cube, which is split into three. We have the center piece with, with one color connected to a core in which they have a fixed position the edge pieces consist of two colors per edge, and the corner pieces consisting of three colors per corner. When a move sequence is being done, its position changes are what you call a permutation. A permutation is the rearrangement of the cube elements in an order. For every move sequence is done on the cube, it results to a single position or a permutation. The amount of combinations a Rubik's Cube can have is over 43 quintillion. What you are looking at on the screen is the exact amount of the total permutations a Rubik's Cube can have. We then have the algorithm. A Rubik's Cube algorithm is any sequence of turns used to achieve the cube's solve state. This is as simple as making the right side turn or making a cross at its upper side. Knowing the multiple move sequences such as the face turns and cube rotations, it would create the algorithm that could solve the shuffled Rubik's Cube back to its own state. These figures are the move sequences or move notation that are used in dissolving the Rubik's Cube. So there are types of movement the notation would fall under. We have the clockwise movement, and the counterclockwise movement. Algorithms are written like this. For each side of the cube, it would represent a letter. 
U would represent the top side, D would represent the down side, R would represent the right side, L is for the left side, F for the front side, and B for the back side. When a letter alone is labeling that move notation, that side will move clockwise. When the move is labeled with a letter that has a prime or an apostrophe, that side will move counterclockwise. So these are the mathematical terms that the Rubik's Cube can visualize. Let us now move on to the group theory. In modern algebra, it is a mathematical field that studies algebraic structures known as groups. In other words, it is a set of elements defined with an operation that integrates two of its elements to form a new element that will satisfy these ac actions. These actions are the set of postulates that a group must follow to satisfy the group theory. If any of these actions are not satisfied, then the set is not a group. The actions of the group theory are as follows. Action 1, closure. Action 2, associative. Action 3, identity. Action 4, inverse. Action 1, closure. Action 1 stated that all sets of operations or actions must be closed or restricted within only the group elements. So whatever set of actions, whether you rotate one side of the cube, it is still an element of the group. So if we were to rotate the cube by 90 degrees, you would see that there would be a new element within the group which opens up many possibilities. Action 2. Associative. Action 2 stated that within the group operation, we may put wherever the parentheses is, it would still produce the same result. With the use of numbers, we can use the equation 1 plus 2 plus 1. We can add a parenthesis to the last two numbers and it would produce the same result when we put the parenthesis to the first two numbers of the operation. So with the use of a Rubik's Cube, let's say that we did an algorithm wherein we rotate the right side clockwise once and rotating the top side clockwise twice. This algorithm is equivalent to rotating the top side counterclockwise twice, which would be followed by rotating the right side counterclockwise once. That is the associative action. Action 3. Identity. Action 3 stated that for every element of the group, there is an identity, and when applied to another element, it still produces that same element. For example, we have 1 plus 0 equals 1. When we add 0 to 1 or any number, it produces that same element and in which case is 1. So 0 in this axiom is basically doing nothing to the element. So with the use of a Rubik's Cube, if we try to rotate some parts of the cube, then we proceed to do nothing. It is still the same position unless if I try to rotate the cube again. That is the identity action. Action 4. Inverse. Action 4 states that for every element, there is an inverse. And when the two are added together, it yields to a zero. For example, we have the number 2. The so number 2 is a positive integer. So the inverse of positive 2 is a negative 2. And we add positive 2 to negative 2, it will equate to a 0. With the use of a Rubik's Cube, what we are going to do is inverse the moves. So let's say we use the algorithm R, U, F. So the inverse counterpart of, the, of this algorithm is F, U, R that has an apostrophe or prime. That is the inverse action. So now we have reached the endpoint of the discussion. Let us review what we have learned in group theory. 
Group theory is a set of elements defined with an operation that integrates two of its elements to form a new element. The four elements of the group theory are axiom 1, closure, states that the set of operations are restricted to the group of elements. Axiom 2, associative, states that wherever you put the parenthesis in the operation, it produces the same result. Action 3, Identity, states that an element applied to an identity would remain the same. And Action 4, Inverse, which states that every element has its inverse. That said, we will talk about one of the possible applications of group theory. And one of the applications that you can find is through the use of a GPS, or Global Positioning System. The Global Positioning System, or GPS, changed the way we approach travel and navigation. The GPS works by choosing your destination wherein it pings the satellites and transmits a unique signal to each one. With these signals, the GPS uses an algorithm to compute the location of the user. This information is implemented by the GPS to map out the distance of a route and travel time for the user. So that is one of the applications of group theory. This is Mark Carta saying thank you for listening and have a good day.